care what you believe As long as you are in my heart You're just as real as me And maybe Maybe even more Someone who's touched so many lives Can never, never die Not even Earth could hold us Not even Earth controls us Not even the ground can keep us down The memories in my head Are just as real as the time we spend You'll always be close to me, my friend This is not the end. This is not the end. One of the first musical memories I have, I guess, was when uh, my older brother came home from college, and I was probably in about kindergarten, and I stole one of his mixtapes, which uh, I think was an album that had Tom Tom Club on it. And uh, I really liked that, I think. Uh, rappy Wordinghood, or whatever the song is that they talk about, 
words, and it kind of seemed like a lesson that a kindergartner had listened to. I was into that song, but since it was a mixtape, it had been recorded over a bunch of times, and the label on it actually said jazz. So for a couple of years, I thought Tom Tom Club was jazz. <laughs> and I never liked my dad's version of those records, so... Your dad's confused. jazz wasn't as good as, yeah, it was, as your brother's didn't jazz. didn't hold up to the Tom Tom Club. I was really young, we had a school talent show, and um, I was in the talent show, I was watching it, and you know, it was just, it was really, like really young kids, so there'd be like a juggler and like a ballerina or something, and then these older kids, they were in like eighth grade, so we thought they were, you know, the coolest ever, and they came in and they had a punk band, and they set up on stage, and they played um, 99 Red Balloons, but like, punk as hell and it was so loud and so just totally inappropriate they got shut down in like in like 30 seconds and i was like this is the best thing i've ever seen in my life and that was like that was the first time i was like wow music is really cool i think my favorite album growing up uh just in terms of the one I played the most would definitely be Guns N' Roses' Appetite for Destruction. That was a big one for me too. Yeah, I think I listened to that for like three years straight. You know, I, somebody had like burned a copy of that for me at the time and they had left off the last song. <laughs> and so GNR was like my favorite band. And two years later, I heard that song for the first time, and that was just like the most mind-blowing experience. No, but there had been Rocket Queen, I think, was, was the last one. Queen. My friend was like, yeah, Rocket Queen's my favorite. I'm like, what? <laughs> like, so it was like discovering this the holy grail that I'd been missing this whole time. But I was really pissed at my friend that made me the copy of, the, of that album. The first song I learned to play think would be Sunshine of Your Love on guitar. No way. I, mean, I think that was actually the same thing for me. Yeah, every kid in sixth grade who goes to the guitar store and they have a little lesson in the back yeah. for a half hour. I think that's kind of like the standard. It's always like this burned out hippie dude who teaches you, you know, and so he's like, yeah, you got to learn the freshest, latest stuff. It's like Sunshine of Your Love. Definitely <laughs> like some Jimi Hendrix in there. Yeah. Like Purple Haze, I think, was early on. Some Zeppelin. I was really like kind of scared to go into that back room with that guy because I guess he was a classical guitarist and I didn't know what that meant at the time. But I just remember these talons. <laughs> the giant it. Yeah, yeah, the fingernails. fingernails. Yeah, but only on one hand, which yeah. is really creepy. Uh, my mom is a singer, so when I told her that I wanted to be a musician, she was cool with it. Um, she's like a voice teacher at a high school, and uh, so she was excited. I think my dad was a little weirded out. <laughs> I don't know if I ever even made that transition, but uh, I remember <laughs> when I was a kid, that was sort of their, their joke. I have a younger sister, and my parents have friends with kids the same age, and uh, when we were six or seven, they were going to start us off as a string quartet. So all of us played you know, violin, cello, but we gave that up pretty quick. So I guess now I'm sort of doing it, but different instruments. The first song I wrote was like, you just kind of record everybody playing in the basement. <laughs> so it's like five kids playing five different songs at the same time. Yeah, that's kind of... Uh, it's kind of genius. Um, yeah, the first song you write is kind of five or six songs, and that becomes like your first... Right, I don't think that there's much like You get a whole like set writing. out of the one song you're doing. There's not like a lot of writing involved. And the song is about 25 minutes long. Drum solos, for sure. Yeah. Whenever you listen to like a 13-year-old song that he writes, it's like 11 minutes. It's always incredibly long. And then as you learn how to write songs, it gets shorter and shorter, usually. Also sounds a lot like Sunshine Here, Lip. <laughs> yeah. We started writing the new record when we were on tour for the last record, and it was at the end of the tour, the last three months, we did Eastern Europe opening for Depeche Mode. And um, that was awesome, it was, a lot, it was great, but there's a lot of downtime just kind of being stuck in a blizzard, like in a blizzard in Latvia, you know? And like, that tour, we had so much downtime <laughs> that, that it kind of got the juices flowing. 
sometimes boredom is, is the best thing that can happen. Yeah, it's kind of like how a lot of people write books from prison. Like, <laughs> we spend right. a lot of time just backstage in weird locker rooms, staying out of the snow, so we had a, some extra time. It was just forced creativity. And we would just set up the, uh, the laptops in the back of the bus and just record right into those. So we just do a lot of recording on, you know, really simple uh, recording equipment, even like garage band, <laughs> yeah. stuff like that, you know. And so I think that was where the, that was the beginnings of the, of the first songs for this album. Hmm, what kind of party? I usually put on a mellow record when a party starts. Start off with some cocktails, and then, uh, and then it gets crazy from there. It always yeah. ends with someone singing "Journey," but uh, you someone don't have to being start that Anthony, way. the drummer <laughs> in our band. Every party ends because that's when generally everyone leaves. Is when he starts singing "Journey." <laughs> there's definitely a, like an arc to the album choice for a party, because like there's the there's like where you're like getting ready. You're like, oh man, yeah. people are about to come over. So you have your like cleaning That's where up I the start. place album. I start with the jazz, but not in the Tom Tom Club sort <laughs> right, of way. Like actual jazz. Like the actual jazz, maybe with some Afro-Cuban rhythms in there, loosen right. people up. Afro-Cuban's great for like making your bed and like for eating up dips the house. and yeah. The first time I heard our stuff, like not in the studio was um, I think what happened was we started, we just burned CDs and gave it to our friends. And then I'd hear stories about like, you know, they're playing your CD at this club or like at some store in, in New York. And so one day I was in a club and it was, it was playing. It was really cool. <laughs> I think the general litmus test for when you've made it in a band is when Weird Al does a version of your song. <laughs> so We're still waiting. Yeah, we're still waiting. Maybe the next Weird Al album. Yeah, or maybe an original tune in the style of one of our Yeah, songs. it can either be a Weird Al version of one of your songs, or it can be in his polka medley yeah. that he does every album. He includes part of your song. That would be considered making it as well, although not not on the same level of success if you, as if you get your own parody. <laughs>